The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen Royster is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Imagine having the ability to use your innate positive energy to dissolve the stuckness in your life, whether it's emotional, physical, or spiritual, through this incredible dynamic show. Get ready to be transformed from Dr. Jen's live guided healing meditations and intuitive readings and unveil the power of connecting to spirit the angels and your higher self dr jen is passionate about helping you find the answers you're looking for through an inward journey that'll strengthen your connection to spirit and help you trust your intuition now here's your host dr jen royster hello everyone welcome to the show wow one of my favorite topics today it's all about intuition and intuition is truly the voice of your soul the voice that comes from a heart-centered place and we talk about going inward we talk about how do i connect with my intuition how do i hear and tap into that spiritual realm this is intuition 101 really because it's heart center it's coming from your soul it is your true voice it is you it's that side of you that just knows already why you're here and and brings those messages and connects you to that spiritual realm when you're working with angels spirit guides things like that but most importantly here listening to your own soul and the soul path We spoke a couple of weeks ago on aligning the soul path, the you know, the soul's journey with your life choices. This is part of that. And this topic is perfect for right now in the energies of June that we have because we're moving into, let's see, what's today? June 20, tomorrow is the solstice, you know, the first day of summer. And it's also when we move into the sign of cancer, which is a water sign, more emotional, more about that home and that nurturing and the love and the comfort and things like that. So it really works well to tap into intuition with this energy. Now, sometimes this energy is, you know, you feel like, oh, I'm so emotional. I'm so emotional. Yes, it will tap into emotions because emotions will be more connected with the heart chakra and heart-centered choices. But we don't want to be afraid to go there. We don't want to be afraid of our heart's passion because that's where your intuition can connect. And it's very powerful, very, very powerful. When we start to uh, move that way in that direction, we find that just that quiet stillness, being comfortable, with who we are is key here. Now, that's the million dollar question, right? I know. Are you comfortable with who you are right now? Are you comfortable trusting your intuition? Do you trust yourself? Do you do you honor yourself? Do you have self-love? Do you respect who you are? Do you Do you see yourself as successful, things like that? Or do you you do the opposite and you're, you know, very self-critical, things like that? You see, this all plays into the connection here. This all plays into, are you actually hearing your heart's voice, your soul's voice that comes through your intuition? So that's why we're talking about this topic today, because it's perfect with the energies that we have going on right now. There's quite a bit because we have Neptune going on out there and we have Jupiter, which is expansive. We have the Neptune's more of creative and tapping into that side of you that wants to create something new or artistic. And then with this energy, it connects you to the emotions to feel your soul's passion. You don't want to be afraid to feel. And a lot of people cut it off because they don't want to be hurt or they've been hurt, so they're doing that to protect themselves. Yeah, I understand that. I've done that. I've done that because, you know, when you're, when you're sensitive or empathic, you don't want to hurt, you don't want to feel it. 
there's a way to tap into this gift without it taking over and just knocking you for a loop. That, that's the intention. It was never to hurt you. But we have to really realize, well, who are we listening to? A lot of times when we're absorbing energies from outside of ourselves, we're not listening and tapping into our heart's voice, our soul's voice, heart, soul voice. Really, it's the same voice, your intuition. We're not listening and respecting that. You may have got, and you know, most people, and we're not perfect at this if we're learning how, but most people tell me, you know, I had this feeling and I should have just listened to it. How many times have you said that to yourself and you ignored it? And then you wished you had listened to it. See, it's there. It's always there. It, we have to listen. We have to quiet down and we have to go in and listen and trust that. One of the key factors with listening to your true voice, your heart's true voice, your soul voice, your intuition, they all intertwine. I'm going to say all three the whole hour because it all intertwines and people are coming and going out of a show. But it's really your inner truth coming through. It's always there. You have to feel comfortable with who you are to even sit in that stillness. Who can relate to that? How many of you out there hear what I'm saying? Are you comfortable in that stillness within yourself or it's just really hard to go there you know, you know you're, there's always some reason you don't have time to do it that's going to keep you disconnected from this perspective of what I'm talking about today and I mean there's lots of different ways to go in here and approach this and I'm approaching it from this perspective I mean, this is one of the easiest most gentle ways and know you're safe and you can trust it ways to connect and trust your intuition and really hear the messages coming through. And it, it, it boils down to if you honor who you are, if you give yourself just as much respect as you would something else, it's important. It's more important than you realize because we have a lot of people, you know, with all the shifting, all the changing going on right now, we want to feel connected, yet we feel disconnected. You want to look at how you feel about yourself first, right there, right then and there. That, yeah, got to go there. You got to keep it real here. And that's what I want to do for you today. Uh, the angels, I, I did some meditating yesterday with the angels, which I do every day. And I always do that before a show because I want clear voice to bring the message to you to help you with your own journey. And they really brought me home with this one. They said, this has got to be all about the love, the love for going in and being comfortable with that stillness. We are there. And it's not just listening to what an angel tells you and you do what you're told guys. Don't take it that way because it's not about just following something blindly. Just tell me what to do. Those days are gone. That's the old way of doing things. And if you feel like life is harder and things just don't work out the way they used to anymore, it, that's probably why a lot of it is because it just doesn't work that way. We're taking responsibility, whether you realize it or not, with making our choices, utilizing the free will that we have, tapping in and trusting in, in our own inner compass. Your inner compass is your intuition and your soul's voice. That will never steer you wrong. It may not line up with what everybody else thinks you should do, but it won't steer you wrong because that's your inner voice. How do you know you're listening to that, right? That's another question that I hear all the time. It's like, how do I know I'm listening to that? Well, some of that comes from literally a practice or what is your routine to clear and cleanse the energies around you. If you've been in a lot of 
energy where you've absorbed or you're influenced very easily by outside energies, other people's opinions, things like that. You want to take a minute to clear that. You want to give that intention that, no, I want to hear my inner soul's voice and I want to listen to guidance and connect with my angels, spirit guides. I, I want to ascend. I want, I want divine messages only. I mean, you literally put that intention out there. You don't have to feel afraid. Like I've got a shield up to protect because I'm always in this mindset of being attacked. When we shield up our energy, that's not exactly the intention we're trying to do, like to protect and be scared of everything. It's more that we are clarifying what we want to connect to and listen to. Nothing can come into that space that isn't going to be aligned for the best and highest good for you or for the outcome of the whole situation. If you want divine messages and you want to tap into your higher self and soul, that intention, that shield that you put up, I don't want to hear anything else. I want to hear that. There's nothing to be afraid of. It, think about it that way. Have you ever heard it in that perspective? Because that just really brings it home. And when you feel that and understand that, you're comfortable in your space. Talk about comfort zone. We talk all the time about how you've got to be out of your comfort zone to grow and learn. But actually, there is a comfort zone that feels like home. That feels like that's me. That's that space that I feel the most comfortable in. And that comes from inside you. That is this inner voice I'm talking about. That's very powerful. Probably one of the most powerful things you'll ever do in your soul's journey as you, as you go through this awakening path and ascend into higher frequencies of living and grow on your soul's ascension is to listen and connect with it and be comfortable in that space. You may be completely different from who you've been trained or programmed to be. You may not be that at all. You're like, oh, I thought this was what I wanted, but I guess that's because that's what I was always told and this is how it is and this is, this is w what you do to be a good person, things like that. Are you true to yourself? So intuition is like second nature when you become comfortable with being in that space. It's not hard to listen to it. It's not hard to trust it. And I think sometimes it's made to feel so divided from yourself and so way over there, so disconnected that you feel like, I don't know if I can connect like that. You know, or you, people are like, oh, I wish I could connect like you do. Well, you can connect the way that's right for you. And when my intention with everything that I share with you is I share my experiences and I do readings, but I do them to help you see that you have this place within you that's unique and you have, you have the same database inside you that's unique for you. You think we always wonder, why didn't we come here with a manual so we knew what we were doing? Guess what? You did. That inner compass, that inner compass, that higher self already knows why you came here. It knows your path. It knows to steer you. It knows to send the red flags. And you know, you, you feel these all the time. You have these red flags that'll pop up. You know, I don't know why I'm feeling this red flag about the situation, but I do. It seems like it's just so awesome on the surface. You know, one of the best things you can do in a situation like that is don't disregard the red flag or hesitation you might feel inside. You can be polite. You can move on. It doesn't mean you have to commit to anything. If you wait for it, it'll probably play out and you'll see why you picked up the red flag. The red flag may not be that there's anything bad or negative about that situation or person or whatever it is. It's just not an alignment for you. It's not the best connection for you where you're going in your journey. So that doesn't mean we have to say, oh, I can't be with that. That's just bad. And sometimes it'll feel like it's toxic to us. Maybe it's just not connecting for you because that's not where you need to be. 
So it doesn't necessarily mean that the other is bad. It might be perfect for someone else, depending on where they are in their journey. When you look at it that way, we can pull away all the blaming and it's got to be something else outside of me and the, all this victim attacking mode. Yeah, that, that really is not helping you to connect at all. That actually blocks it. From the way I understand it and the way I've experienced it, that, that's what will block it. So we're talking about this. We're talking about angel messages and what they're bringing in and why, why they want us to kind of focus this a little bit more. And I'll share what they've given me. And it's about your intuition and your heart's true voice. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to go over and say hello to everyone over in the chat. Just catch up on all the reading and then I'll come back with that. If you want to call in 1-800-930-2819, uh, we are also live streaming video. We are live streaming on Facebook with Transformation Talk Radio. We're also on YouTube, my YouTube live channel, and that's over on my website as well. You can watch the live video stream if you want to do that. We have our live chats open, so I'm going to go read up on the YouTube live chat and the station, Transformation Talk Radio, has the Facebook live chat. So they'll let me know if anything's coming in over there. Stay with us. We will be right back after the break. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information.
Welcome back to the show. If you're just tuning in, we're talking about our intuition, how we can connect with that. That's our heart's true voice, your soul's true voice. It is who you are, okay? And it's one of the things that we always seem to struggle listening and trusting, right? So there's a couple of things you can ask yourself that, you know, that you can ask yourself, and that's what we're going to do in this segment. I want to say hello to everyone that's joining us over in YouTube chat. Uh, we have David, hello, Shadana, Judy, Marilyn, yay, Marilyn, you're off today and you're with us, awesome. Kelly, Jules, and Tony. And everybody's uh, just pretty much saying good morning. It looks like, oh, Shadana, that's good news. You're more comfortable now. Intuition getting stronger and stronger, that's awesome. Tony's saying she's feeling lost. Well, you know what? We're talking about how you cannot feel so lost today, so I'm glad you're joining us today. Now let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. Now, this is all inner work you're doing on your own, okay? So first off, when you want to connect and trust your intuition on like a choice or it's trying to steer you clear and warn you or anything like that, or it's just guiding you, right? Because we ask, the angels connect with that because they follow and respect our free will as well. And it's always about what is best for us to grow on a soul path. Your soul, that's the priority when it's here, okay? It's not about if you're uh, successful in this job or you live in this place or you wear that shirt, you know? It has nothing to do with this physical world. It's here and it utilizes what's in the physical for your soul to grow. So that's the priority. Some, you know, have you ever heard of the school of hard knocks? Some people seem to grow more when they're being challenged and uh, most of us do you don't have to always be challenged to grow but a lot of times that is when we grow the most because we start to seek out and look for options if you were to look for options without having to go through the challenge and actually listen to that think about how different it would be and as we grow and ascend i I truly believe as we move into trusting that the lessons or the shift becomes easier. Not always at the beginning, because I know I went through my school hard knocks too. Just, uh, just you do. And when you don't, when you start to feel it going that way, after you start to learn what I'm talking about, you go, oh, yeah, I don't want to go down that path. Let me just listen now. Okay. That's like, oh, okay. Let me wise up here. And it reminds me of the sages. You know, if you look at those sages, you know, just like the Buddha, um, Dalai Lama, you know, Tao Te Ching, they never got upset. They were so calm, right? They're so calm. Nothing outside of, their, of them upsets them. They just stay so calm. How do they do that? Because they're, in, they're, they're connected in, on an inner, you know, connection. And, and I'm just giving you some examples and you may know people like, how do they just do that? That's what you want to do for yourself. You want to make that a priority. So here's the questions. How do we start and we get there? You need to be comfortable being in there. You need to be comfortable in that inner, still quiet space called you. You need to be comfortable in there with you, just you. And, you, and it's not loneliness. Being alone is not the same as loneliness, okay? You actually have quite a bit of support when you connect on your intuitive level. But one of the things is, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable with who you are right now, today? You want to ask yourself that. Do you trust when an inner truth comes through? or you just feel this repetitive message coming through. You've asked angels for guidance and you hear this repetitive or you keep seeing the same numbers or you keep seeing different messages popping through. That's all gonna be connected to your intuition and your soul, tuning in and listening with what you asked, even if it did come from spirit guides or angels. It's still coming through that channel through the soul because the soul connects. You see what I mean? I mean, it's kind of interesting with that. Another one is, do you feel peace in where you are right now? 
Do you feel satisfied with who you've become in today, right now? Um, do you feel peace with who you are, where you are, what your path is? I hear a lot of times people are not, and that's what they're looking for. They're struggling with that. Um, do you feel just a calm, oh, you know, like an ease, like your home? It's This is a comfort zone that is amazing. You know, we talk about, oh, you're in your comfort zone. You can't learn. This comfort zone, yes, you can listen and you can hear. So this is a different inner com comfort zone I'm talking about. And it's home. It's like being home after a long day and you go home and it just feels good to be home. Inner, your inner soul home is a comfortable place. It's a safe place. It's an inner knowing that all is well. And it, it is an amazing place to be. It's kind of a, you feel nirvana there. You know, you just feel so comfortable. And that's what I love about this. Okay. Those are the questions. So, you know, not everybody, you don't always feel this way all the time. You may have a day where you feel really good, you know, and it feels comfortable. And then there's another day where something, it just throws you off track and, the goal here is on the days that don't feel that great, this inner compass, this inner comfort zone is where you want to go. You want to go there and that's where you can listen and that's where you can ask and that's where you can find your guidance you're looking for that's coming from your true voice, your compass. The angels will use this connection to send you messages. It also helps you pick up the messages they leave in the physical world, like a feather dropping or dimes or, you know, we have different things that, you know, you seem to have a cons uh, consistency repeating, like the number sequences or like I get feathers and numbers all the time, constantly. I have a lot with nature and you'll feel it. You'll feel it more. It's like, your eyes are open, your ears, you can hear better. You can feel and sense it better when you're in that inner comfort zone I'm talking about. Don't confuse that with the other one. You know, just being in a complacent autopilot every day doing the same thing because it's like a program. That's a completely different place. Yeah, you don't have to think. It's just kind of where we don't work so hard, you know, you just kind of automatically do things. Totally different place I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the one inside, which is where intuition lives, where it comes from. It's like you're sitting right beside the speaker and you can hear clearly. You can see clearly. You're picking up on it. And when you go and you nurture that part of you, it just gets stronger and stronger. I saw where in the chat, Shadana starting to feel more comfortable now. Her intuition's getting stronger and stronger. So that's interesting. I'd love for her to elaborate on that if she could, on what changed for her and how she's doing that. Go ahead and share if you want to. Um, anybody else want to share how they're finding their way through that? And then when you do find that things repeat, like something might repeat, like a challenge before that used to just throw you way off. Once you find this place I'm talking about, and you're starting to trust and respect who you are in the now right here. You might be going through a major shift of big changes. You're completely reinventing the wheel, so to speak, about who you are. You're not really reinventing the wheel. You're discovering the one that you were. You're, you're discovering the original you, the real you. And we're shedding off all the masks, all the things that we thought we were supposed to be. And it feels lighter and lighter and you'll find that you become healthier and help, happier. And, and then when the challenge will pop up that 
you used to just get all upset about before, you don't. You don't feel it like that because you're not in that place of fear and victim and attacking anymore. This is the place to go. Um, and you know, it's very simple. It's very simple to start and practice this. And as you practice this, your intuition gains momentum and it strengthens that comfortable place where if you just, you know, the, that's why meditation is so powerful. You're just giving yourself that five minutes of time where nobody interrupts it. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15. You're giving, you're honoring your day by making sure there's another way to do it. It's really easier than you think when you start to list it out. You're giving yourself a part of the day. It's not always sacrificed for everybody else. Sorry, I'm hitting my mic. I'm like talking with my hands again. I get passionate. And you're, you're honoring it. Like, for example, say your days before were always filled with like work and then you're doing for everybody else and then by the end of the day there was nothing left for you with something you wanted to do and at the end of the day you always wanted to have you, there was something you wanted to do you wake up in the morning you may have a list and it's like oh I want to do some of that today you know like something that you love to do it could be it could be anything it could be a sport it could be just reading a book, your favorite book. It could be just sitting and relaxing in the sunshine. It could be, you know, for me, it's a lot of different things, painting, gardening, whatever. And, but did you, did you slice out a little time for that? Or did it, hey, oh, I don't have time. I got to do all this other stuff. I'm not saying to not be responsible, but it is more of a prioritizing the day differently. If you look, there's probably plenty of time in the day somewhere, somewhere where you could give yourself some time to do something that you really, really want to do. It may not make any sense. Like, I know I should be doing, if you're doing a lot of that, if you're doing a lot of, I should be doing this, but I really want to sit down and read my book, or I should be doing that. The should has guilt attached to it. Think about that word, the energy behind the word should, I should have done this. Or I should have blah, blah, blah. Words have energy. So if you find you're repeatedly wanting and you're longing for time to do something, but there's never time in the day to do it, that would be a good place to start. Even if it's just a little at a time. And now you're giving yourself some honor and respect and something that's important to you. This helps connect to intuition. Self-love is part of connecting to your intuition. Self-honor, self-respect, self-love, all of that ties in to strengthening your intuitive connection and hearing and recognizing the messages when they come through. Uh, it releases and removes all the fear. You're now moving forward and you're not making choices out of fear. Honestly, I don't even know if there is a choice in fear. Usually that just stops everything dead in the tracks and nothing moves. Everything just stuck. Everything just stops. You know, so it's, it's interesting how when you really start to shift your day or your schedule in the slightest bit, and I'm not saying, I know some schedules are so full because you've overcommitted yourself. So you might be detangling a little bit. I've done that before. I know what that feels like. But as soon as you just give a little fraction of something and you pull it back and you claim that power back in that part of the day, the universe will open and swing some doors open and you're going to go, wow, I didn't even have, I didn't even do that much and look how much I got back. And it's really going to start to shift it for you if you start to listen to that and pay attention to that. So let me see here. We've got Judy saying, uh, Marilyn's talking about she sees a lot of coins. And, uh, okay. Um, coins are, see, that's a way of message for you. 
Uh, Judy is saying, I find that for the last year or so, I meditate at my lunch hour at work and it really helps me refocus and not get scrambled with many tasks at work to be completed. That's just one thing that helps me. See, that's a great example. Thank you, Judy, for sharing that. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. She's slicing that little bit of time away. It's actually, she's more productive in her day because she gave herself that little bit of time. That's perfect. Absolutely. And I think she knows what I'm talking about. You give yourself that little bit, it starts to open it up more. When intuition comes into this and reason with this energy of feeling, intuition is you're going to feel like, you know, you get that gut feeling. That's that, I got a feeling and yeah, I got this feeling, you know, that kind of thing. That's intuition. Even when people don't feel like they're spiritual or even do any of this, they still got intuition. It's just do they listen to it or ignore it? You know, or do they say, oh, I'm just being silly. I don't know what that was. I wouldn't say that's silly. I think it's very smart and very wise to respect your intuition and actually take it a whole lot more seriously and make it a priority to listen to it. You make choices after you listen to it, okay? You don't have to go blindly making random radical decisions. I'm not even saying do that. I'm saying respect it and give it the honor it deserves, okay? Here's another thing that can help you connect to intuition. Because it's a feeling and it's a sense of being in that comfort zone in the soul, that comfort zone, okay? Remember, we're talking about a different one. If you think about five, five, six, maybe only two or three, I don't know where you are with this. I'm going five. That sounds like a good number. Five things that feel like, oh, I'm home, you know? Now, you might immediately go to, ooh, that favorite smell in the kitchen or whatever. It could be certain activities, certain smells, certain foods, certain things you see. But if you start to look at what makes you feel comfortable and cozy, you know, what, what is that feel good place for you? And you'll start by listing things in your physical world. That's okay. You can connect that way too. And it might be that you just need, you know, maybe a certain music playing or just a little bit of quiet time or no television, something like that, whatever it might be. And if you have this list and you start to make that part of your day, at least somewhere, you'll start to find that things are starting to clear up on the inner and what you're hearing. You, you may become, you may, you're going to find that you're more aware and you're noticing things more. Now, if you've been working on this all the time and you feel comfortable, you feel you're good. I'm comfortable with who I am. I'm, I feel confident. I feel empowered. Fantastic. Your intuition is there. It should be doing pretty good. And then you're looking at if you listen or disregard it. Are you listening or disregarding? I mean, it's just so much of this. This energy right now with the, um, the sign of the water sign, cancer, is it's emotional, it's, it's feelings, it's heart-centered anyway, it's about being home in the comfort. So you see, if you took that energy while you're working on this connection, it empowers and supports it. That's what, that's what the angels brought to my attention because, and the other thing that was so comforting was, and it was Jophiel, Archangel Jophiel, that came through with this one. Jophiel said, the entire universe is, is beautiful. Whether you see it or not, there is so much beauty in the world. There's so much beauty within yourself. And as you start to learn and appreciate these amazing aspects of who you are, it lights you up more as an individual soul in the world. And we're making changes in the world in a very powerful way when we do that. Um, just taking yourself seriously, respecting your thoughts, even if they don't seem very positive at the beginning, respect them, acknowledge them, 
don't discount them. That's a good way to practice not, not discounting. You may have some that are like, oh, I don't want to feel like that, but I do. Well, acknowledge that you do and then ask to open up to an awareness of how you could shift to feeling a different way about it. And you're looking for a different perspective. That's a way to work with that one. It's really cool. Um, let's see what we've got here. Um, Marilyn's saying she's she's doing that on her break too, and her coworker thinks she's weird. That's okay. It, you know what? It's being okay with that, right? I know that we. <laughs> I think it's great, but you know, a lot of times what they think is weird, they admire that you do it, you know, and they admire like, wow, you know, cause everything to them is like, I don't want anybody to usually people that are criticizing that or feeling like that, they, they're still concerned about what the outside world feels about them. And you don't need to fix it. You don't have to worry about it. You just need to stay in your own comfort zone with it and let just be the weird one that sits at your lunch hour and does your meditation. That's okay. Because you're setting a great example for the future that way. You don't have to try to push it on anybody. Um, but that that's very good. She's sending them blessings anyway. That's awesome. And that's the way to be. And just let it go. This is a really calm message that comes through today and it's loaded and it's loaded with love it is just full of love it's full of love for you from from the divine from all of your spirit guides and angels but it's also coming from your own soul and it's wanting to just bring that out and shine just a little bit brighter in the world because we light the world up and we raise the frequency of the world when we work on ourselves individually like this, your intuition will just be a second nature when you pay attention to how you respect and feel about yourself. It will start to fall into place so much easier and actually quite quickly, very quickly. So I'm going to take another break. When we come back, we'll keep going because this is just, this is just one of those feel good, calm down, episodes that is about just love putting it out there shining bright and just join me in lighting up your own and we'll just brighten up this world together i'm dr jen you're listening to the jen royster show we'll be right back after the break Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information.
welcome back. This is our last segment. So we're going to wrap it up. This has just felt like such a calming, peaceful, heart centered episode, which I hope that you've been feeling that. And if you haven't, I want you to do that right now. We just feel the comfort that comes from within yourself. And as you're lighting that up and we're lighting it up together simultaneously, you can feel that empowerment just reaching out into the world. It is truly a beautiful place to be because when you're lit up like that from your soul and you just go about and you do your meditations at your office and you don't worry about what somebody else is thinking, you're still leaving an imprint of light frequency there. You're just spreading it out. You don't even have to try to fix or do anything. I see where Maddie, hi Maddie, Maddie joined us and Maddie's saying she started taking time to go to the same fountain every morning to meditate briefly and it does help center her before walking into the office. See, that's awesome. And when I read that, I wanted to like add to that because I was thinking, what a wonderful thing. If you have a fountain, which is water, that you can stop and do uh, a little bit of a meditative moment with. That's perfect for centering. But I know when I used to work in offices like that, the first thing I thought when I saw this was center, ground, and release any of the tension or lower uh, energies that you feel like you may absorb. Let the water take it because water will just pull it right off. You don't have to get wet, just you're by the water. Use the water as the energy and the intention. As soon as I saw that, I went, ooh, she can do both. Then when you leave, if you can walk by the fountain again, if you absorbed anything from that day, ask for it to get cleared off before you move on into your personal time. I kind of like that one. And I'd love it if you tried it or if you remember or you want to try it. But if you do, I'd love the feedback on that one because that just seems like a great opportunity to ground center and clear out because, you know, working in, in an environment where you're around a lot of other energies. And if you happen to be naturally absorbing that, you know, you want like a daily maintenance that helps you keep that balanced and cleared off. So I, um, she does go, I do it after work too. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Leave whatever you absorb that you don't need to take with that. That's like a gift, Maddie. I love that. So she is doing that. That's awesome. Perfect. Now we've been sharing and the group over in the live chat, they've been sharing what they've been doing for just a very few short minutes a day. Just imagine, just imagine just a couple, even if you did five minutes, two or three times a day, how different that would be. I mean, taking breaks for five minutes, it's more powerful than you realize just to go inward and then say, you know what? Here's my intention. This is what I would love. This was, this is what I would love to understand and have more clarity about. You're putting that message to your soul, universe, angels, spirit guides. Hey, you know, I'm looking for some messages or some confirmation on what I'm feeling here. Then you go about your day, forget about it and just say, thank you. It's already been resolved, right? If you practice that and then just watch how it comes in. And if you see messages that are repeating, like the numbers, check to see what that number frequency means. Um, check to see if it shifts, check and see if it's a color. Um, a lot of times with feathers, I get a lot of feathers, a lot. That's more of a, a lot of times you see that more in, uh, in Native American. I know that for sure that they, they use a lot with that, but I do a, I, that a lot and they're, they're showing up in places. How did that get there? Like inside my car on the dash or inside the house or inside, you know, places that wouldn't be just a natural feather from a bird falling to the ground. You know, that's, you got to pay attention to that, right? But the color, the color too. look at the color of something. If it's a feather, 
if it's just a color, like say you're always seeing the color red or some, a particular color out there in the world is just popping out at you and you're noticing it more. And who's ever seen like you're just going down the road or anywhere else and you'll see a sign and you probably pass this sign all the time. And then all of a sudden it just feels like a neon sign blinking at you. And what is it saying? Pay attention to that. There's lots of ways in the physical world that your inner world, your intuition, your connection with higher realms, which also is your higher self and soul will send you messages. So you'll, you'll get them. You will get them. They're always there. We're just stopping, catching our breath, not rushing through life so fast that we're missing it. That's really what, what it takes and respecting what you're picking up. And I hope that everyone will do that and give themselves some time. We just had a full moon. We had a wonderful full moon. And I purposely, I know you're like, what? You know, there's a lot of information that goes out there on a full moon, but I purposely left you alone because I wanted you to be inward and be with your own thoughts on that. But if you're in the angel retreat and you had some interesting experiences, go to the community and share it. Um, you can share that in our private community there if you're one of the members. But how are you experiencing it? Be, how are you feeling the shift? How are you feeling that things are falling into place for you? Or does it feel like it's just calming down? Does it feel like it's just sitting? You're not sure. There's no right or wrong answer here. You just want to honor what you're picking up. As soon as you start going into a place where you're really noticing and honoring that, it starts to open up and clarify that message even more so. So, so Shadana is saying she's noticing tiny white feathers in her house or parking lot, sometimes white and gray. I'm happy about it because I struggle paying attention. Absolutely. And I, I love the feathers. Um, it's one of the gentle messages that can come through and, and they will get your attention. Trust me, your soul knows how to get your attention. We sure know how to ignore it too, don't we? And that's what we want to learn to practice not doing. We want to, we want to get to a place where we're just, you know, I really like who I am. I'm comfortable in my own skin. This is where you want to be to trust your intuition. It's a self love respect for yourself. You're good with who you are right now. You might have some challenges in life, but you know, with intention that you're working on things, you're going through a shift, a change. You got to appreciate and respect who you are in this moment and honor who you are. And there's, there's something we can learn from everything we're going through, whether it's challenging or not, there's always something that can help us get to the next place. It really doesn't ever stop, but we can ignore it because we can choose to ignore it. The goal is to not ignore it, to work with it, to listen because you're listening to who you are. You're listening to what's you. So if you can't trust you and a lot of times that's what the problem is. We just don't trust ourselves. We don't trust our messages that come through. And those messages are coming from you. So think about how you feel about yourself and if you're comfortable and that's the goal, that's the secret plan. If it's a secret to find your way through this and to clarify that intuition connection, to strengthen that connection to higher realms. This energy right now is all about all of the above and it can help you do that. It, you can do this any time of the year, but it's even easier right now. So why not? Why not? I'm just about out of time guys. So I do want to say thank you to everyone that has joined us today. It has been a very peaceful, calming energy with the show today. And I, honestly, I've kind of liked it. Um, Shadana sharing that the night of the full moon during meditation, everything was moving fast pictures and fast forward made me dizzy. Mm, a great message. Thank you, David. Hope all have a great day. See you in the retreat. Absolutely. Um, 
I was having some crazy dreams and I just started listening and then all these new ideas started coming out and I've been working on that. So with that, if you have anything, share it. But I've got to go. We're out of time now. You can keep sharing in the retreat if you want to or over on the website and we'll just keep going with it. Thanks so much for listening, guys. It has been my pleasure and an honor to be here with you shining our light together. Namaste. You've been listening to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life. Remember to tune in each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Dr. Jen Royster is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Imagine having the ability to use your innate positive energy to dissolve the stuckness in your life, whether it's emotional, physical, or spiritual, through this incredible dynamic show. If you've missed any part of this show or any other show, visit www.jenroyster.com and transformationtalkradio.com.